Good evening, everybody, and uh, uh, welcome to the stream that I said I wasn't going to do. Uh, I said that I thought I had it just about done, and I'd just do the last little spit and polish bits offline, but I got looking at it a little bit more, and I think there's a little bit more work that needs to be done on it than what I originally gave it credit for, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and do it live and do it on the stream because I think there's little touch-ups that... Uh, there's, there's quite a few little touch-ups that need to be done, and I think maybe it'll help people to actually see uh, some of the things that you have to do to, to maybe add that spit and polish to any design that you're coming up with. Went into iRacing, and I recolored my number, and I recolored my wheels, because those are the uh, two of the aspects that aren't going to be affected by your, uh, your trading paints paint scheme. So here's where we left off, and you see I made the wheels white. Uh, I thought it looked cool. Doesn't have to be that way. You guys can pick whatever you want to pick. Uh, if anybody decides to, to download this and run it later. Um, we uh, kept the number pretty much the same, but changed the, the color scheme a little bit. And, uh, of course, you do that just by scrolling down here. Uh, and, and changing the colors here. Just the way you would for the... If you were going to do the... Uh, a default paint in iRacing where you would come up here and change the colors. Uh, it's the same thing down here for the numbers. You just pick whatever your preferred number is and whatever your preferred font is, whether you want it italicized and then what your colors are. And then right below that is where you pick your wheels and it's your color and then whatever finish you want. So we went with white semi-gloss. Um, but I want to take a look at some of the things that I want to fix. Now, some of the things that we mentioned in the previous stream is I want to take some of these logos on the nose and make these a little bit smaller. Some of these are a little bit bigger than I want and they're a little, it looks a little cluttered. Uh, same with the frame on the nose. The auto light on the end planes here is a little crooked. It looks straight in the template, but when you put it on the model, it, it looks a little crooked. So I just want to angle that a little bit so that that looks straight and, and is nice and tidy. And uh, I think we talked about making the Autolite logo here on the engine cover a little bit bigger. Uh, and also the frame logo on the top of the side pod potentially a little bit bigger. We got to see what that looks like, but I think that can be a little bit bigger. Uh, but we like the Autolite anniversary logo there. That looks pretty good. Um, and I think we like the uh, uh, just about everything else, the placement. The Autolite on the uh, extra wing elements here looked pretty good. We changed the... We went from the orange, white, black to just to just black on the extra elements there. Uh, we still do have the white up here on the tail. Um, I might change that, and then I'm still debating whether or not I want to put anything on the bottom here. Um, I usually don't, but maybe we'll play with it and see what it looks like. But some of the things that I noticed in addition to those items after I got looking at this is um, I don't like how this is on the wheel fairing the chevy logo is a little bit pushed to the top i think i want to take that logo and center it inside this triangle and then move the safety clean logo someplace else either under here under the fairing or on top of the fairing and the other thing is i zoomed in on this maybe you can see it here we'll zoom in on it on the on the template but you can see anywhere where there's the one of the stripes you still have some of the blue and red left over from the template um, so when we did the color exchange, the color correction, we didn't quite get all of the, the borders, uh, along these, these lines and these edges. So, um, I want to go in and clean that up as well. And where should we start? Oh, the other things I want to do is, is the, uh, the pit boards, uh, that are down here. Um, and then maybe add the sponsor, uh, on, on that too. So th these both need to be changed down here. Um... I think that's it. And there's maybe a couple other touches. As we'll see how we're doing on time. Maybe we'll do a couple other things as, as well. But uh, let's uh, let's go through some of the things. You know what I want to touch on first? I want to see if I can fix that issue with the the stripes. And uh, I'll actually take the wire off for that. And we'll kind of zoom in. You can really see it here where we get this um, red and blue edging on everything. And there's even a little bit of spillover uh right there so we want to take that and go through and try and take another crack at the 
color exchange and maybe be a little bit more aggressive with this time. So we're gonna select that layer as the active layer. And then I'm gonna right click and say colors and map and color exchange. And again, I realize um, for anyone that hasn't seen the earlier streams, um, the way GIMP is capturing some of the, the windows on my computer, or the way, I'm sorry, the way Streamlabs is capturing some of the windows, including GIMP, including trading paints. If I open up a, a menu, like a right click menu, or a, a menu from the menu bar at the top of the screen, or if I open up a dialog box, you're not gonna see that dialog box. Um, but I will try and explain to you what it is that I'm doing so that you have an idea. Most of the time, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'll tell you like what to click on. Um, and it's going to make sense to you once you're, once you're in it. But, uh, for instance, I just opened up the color exchange, uh, window. I don't think this is showing up. No, it's not. So essentially what, what opens up is, uh, it shows you your from color and your to color, essentially the color that you have and whatever color you want to turn that color into. And you can use an eyedropper. You can just select the color or you can use an eyedropper. We'll use the eyedropper. And then you have red, green, and blue thresholds. And those are sliders that you have to move back and forth to tell it, do you want you know, anything that's red changed or maybe just something that's really, really close to the shade of red that you selected. Um, and clearly, in our case, we didn't go aggressive enough. We should have taken that slider and pushed it farther. Uh, in order to get some of these red and blue shades uh, that uh, that's obviously we're still seeing here. And then there's also a, a blending option and opacity settings if you want to make part of that layer see-through. Um, I generally leave those default. I don't mess with those. Uh, but right now, we're going to select the from color, and we're going to start with uh, this red. So we're going to pick that. And um, once you pick the color, you say OK. And then the two color... In this case, I believe the red should actually end up being the, the orange that we selected. Um, and again, we'll take the eyedropper, we'll just grab the orange from over here, and we'll say OK. And as we move the sliders, we should see something change, although so far, OK. When I, change, <laughs> when I hit blue, it changes, but that's not what I want. I don't want it to turn gr green or yellow. I don't know why it's doing that. OK. so. We did that. Let's see if we can do this with the blue now. Let's see how much of that we can get rid of. Um, oh, I, I didn't set the two color. Two color I want to be white. Um, okay, see now if I move the red threshold, it gets rid of most of that red. Not quite all of it. Oh, there we go. If I move the red and the blue, it kind of leaves me with this little yellow bit. Well, let's do that, and then maybe we'll come and do another pass on it with the yellow. So I'm moving the sliders around. Whoa! <laughs> That's... I don't know how I got that color. Okay. If I, if I play with the blue threshold, it wants to turn things red. All right. Well, that can, that'll get rid of most of it. Um, a lot of the stuff down on the bottom is going to be cut off. It's outside the green. Anything outside this green line isn't going to show up, so we don't have to worry about it. In fact, this area up here I was going to fix is outside the green line, so I don't need to worry about it. That's okay. That's not going to that's not going to show up, so I don't need to fix it. So um, now I think we can just start to uh, address some of the graphical issues. So what you see when you go into iRacing, look at the preview, is the, the high downforce configuration or the, um, uh, or the road course configuration is where you usually will use that. And so we're actually looking at these in the model. In the actual 3D model, when it renders, it shows that the, the, the end of the word auto light on this side, if I'm looking at the the one to the driver's right is is dipped down. And I think what's happening here is if you, you see this cluster of frame lines underneath auto light and how that's not exactly straight across, that is kind of at an angle. Relative to that, um, the the E at auto light is a lot lower, is a lot closer to that group of lines than the A is. 
So I think that's what we're seeing. So I think we just need to make this Autolite logo um, li line up parallel with this cluster of lines here because that's going to represent a contour uh, in the wing. I think with the Speedway configuration, the high, the low downforce configuration, um, which is these right here, um, I think it is more or less straight across, so I'm going to leave those alone. We're not going to know what that looks like until I actually render the model in an actual race session, um, because unfortunately iRacing doesn't let you check both configurations, so I would actually have to load it into a, a session where I would be using this configuration. Um, and I'm actually going to be doing some, uh, some practice runs at IMS on the Oval, uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. So I'll get a chance to check that out at that point. And if if it doesn't look right, we can we can come back in and fix it. But for right now, because um, I believe there, if you get it straight like that, you're usually okay based on previous work. Uh, but this one up here, we need to adjust a little bit. So we're going to use our rotation tool. So we go up into the uh, top here. You can't see this because my face is covering it, but we have a whole bunch of tools. Uh, can you see this? Yeah, you can kind of, just on the just on the edge of where my face is, there's this tool right here. And if you right click on it, it, it gives you uh, transform option, rotate, scale, shear, flip, perspective, 3D transform, and handle transform. And we're gonna select rotate, and you'll see that the image changes when we select it, when we turn it to rotate. Now we have to find this layer. So we'll go to, no, I think we need to expand that again. So we need to scroll up and find where this layer is. So we're looking for auto light, um, front wing, and this is gonna be right, I think. Road course front wing, and there we go. Okay, man, you get to the point where you've got so many different layers. I mean, I'll just scroll through them here. And even if you label, even if you label them correctly, sometimes it's still hard to find the right one. Imagine if these weren't labeled and these were just eight seven five six nine three dot jpeg. You'd never figure out. You'd have to click through all of them randomly. You can click on the the layer and it will highlight it in the list. But the minute you let go of the mouse button, it goes back to where you were in the list. And so you still have to go find where that was. And if it's just a gibberish name it can still be difficult to, to pick it out in the list. Um, so we've got it selected now, and we're gonna click on it to enter this rotation mode. And we're gonna hold down control, if I remember right, so because we don't wanna snap it. If we hold down shift, um, it'll snap to certain angles uh, and I believe it's, yeah, 15 degree increments. Um, so, but we don't wanna do 15 degree increments. We wanna be very fine with it. So we're gonna hold down control and we're gonna line it up until it looks like it's roughly parallel with this cluster of lines. Of course, everything's very pixelated, so nothing's really at a true angle, um, but we're gonna approximate that, and I think that's about right. And it looks like this is about negative three degrees uh, rotation, which is good, because we can just replicate that on the other side. And here, we already know it's gonna be three, so we can go ahead Whoops. Let's just, can we just type it? Let's just type it. And again, try and just approximate that angle there. And we're gonna click rotate to lock that in. If you don't click this rotate button again, sometimes it won't save your setting. It'll just turn it back to whatever angle it was at to begin with. All right, next thing I think we wanna do is maybe some of the resizing of the logos on the nose, the side pod, and the engine cover. So first we'll start with the nose because everything here just really needs to get a little bit smaller. So we're gonna go back up to this rotate tool and we're gonna right click on it again and we're gonna go back to the scale tool. And again, we see that it changes to the icon for the scale tool. And just like before, we need to find these layers. This one, I wanna get this inside. You see these heavy clump of lines here is a contour on the engine or on the uh, the nose cover i don't have to be in that per se but i think if you stay within that i think the logo looks a lot cleaner so again we're going to click on the logo 
and we are just going to pull in on these handles on the corners and until it's about symmetrical. I think right about there. That looks pretty good, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than that. Okay. Kind of like that. It's not actually perfect. Well, it depends on how this is actually cropped. Um, again, you want it to look centered, even if it's not perfectly centered. Sometimes the eyes lie to you. So, and it, 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 you get into it a lot when you've got words that are that are angled. Um, because you see over here, if you actually look at the farthest extent of this E, it's definitely crossing this line right about here. And if you look at the A, it's... If you extend it, it would be about the same point on the other side. But it looks like the A is farther over to uh, farther over that line than the E, just because the angle on the E actually follows the contour, where the A actually uh, opposes it. So um, it's pretty close. We'll we'll keep that because I think it's a compromise between again what the eye thinks it's looking at and then what you've actually got. Grab the handles. And we'll just drag it from opposite corners. And I think I'm going to use these lines here as guidelines. Now, this image actually stretches a little farther uh, down here on the bottom because there is a registered trademark uh, little logo after the M. It's very difficult to see at the scale. Um, but that's not super visible, and, and I want to center it based on the FRAM and not on the uh, additional width created by the uh, registered trademark symbol, uh, because you're not going to really see that from a distance, and it's just going to make it look like the FRAM logo is off-center. So uh, we're going to center it based on the letters, which uh, we have right there. So that looks pretty good. All right, now we've got the Performance Plus, and we'll do that too. Again, we'll just continue to use these lines as guidelines. Shrink that down a little bit more. Okay, some things didn't stick. Carbon X and Performance Plus still look big. Okay, I did, apparently I didn't lock that change in. All right, we got to fix that. All right, this is where, like I said, when you rotate something, you have to click rotate. Uh, sometimes if you when you scale something if you don't click scale it, it seems to me like sometimes it makes me do that and sometimes it doesn't and I'm sure there's something slightly different that I do um, that that makes that difference um, but to be completely honest I haven't figured that out yet so to me it just kind of seems random so now let's check that out again we'll kind of zoom out take the wireframe off and I think that looks a lot better. Let's see if we can make the Fram side pod and Autolite engine cover logos a little bit more substantial. Maybe until the handle box touches that green line there. And um, I'm not sure, maybe just a little bit on the top right. Because you want the border to be about the same. Here, this, this uh, margin is about the same as this. Okay, so this line right here is a seam actually in the body. And I don't think I want it that close to the seam. So I think I'm going to keep it maybe right there. Okay, I think that's close. Um, I think this gap is about the same. Eh, not quite. Okay. Now this M there should line up with our bottom of our F. Not quite, because the scale's not quite right yet. It's almost like the scale's too big. Yeah, it's almost like this logo is smaller in scale. Now we can actually check that, because I can check the scale on this, and it is 293 by 69. And then I can check this other one. That's not that one. So we need Fram pod left. 
this one. And now we click the scale tool. And yeah, so we can make that a little bit closer. So 299.69, what was the other one? Two ninety three sixty nine, so it's actually skewed a little bit. All right, we're gonna break this link and we're gonna make this two ninety nine, and we're gonna say rescale, and that's gonna stretch it a little bit. I don't know if which one of these. It's a very very slight proportion, so whatever it is, it's not much. Um, but I want it to be as accurate as possible. Okay, I think this is pretty good. It may not be perfect, but it's awfully damn close. And it, you don't have to get things perfect. Um, God knows I've seen actual race car liveries where decals are not straight. So it doesn't have to be perfect. But, you know, it's just pride in the work. You want to get it. You want to get it looking pretty good. So I think that's good. Um, I don't remember if I just saved or not. We'll save. Now we're going to jump over to this Autolite logo that I think is going to be a lot easier because we have a tighter grid of frame lines here that we can use to adjust this. So this is going to be Autolite engine cover. So we're going to grab this with the scale tool. And I'm going to bring this down until we're done. Right, I'm going to bring that... Right, it got, it's hard to see where that is, but right just below that frame line right there. And then we're going to bring it up um, to, I think, this frame line right here. We'll use that as a guide. Just a little bit bigger than it was before. Um, but again, there's a difference in contour in the car right here. That's why you see these bunch. Whenever you see lines that are bunched up, that's an area where there's going to be a, a, ch a change in the contour. That's where there's going to be a curve or, a, uh, or an angle that you have to be careful of. And a lot of times, if you stretch decal over that, it'll uh, skew the decal because you're looking at it in 2D. And then when you map that in 3D, it's going to stretch it in a weird way. So in real life, it looks cool to have the, the decals kind of go over some of those contours. Um, but when you're doing something in 2D here, you have to be careful about the way things are going to get stretched and skewed. Let's see. Oops. I don't know if I wanted to go quite that much. This little scale box up here, um, there's this little kind of like a link uh, icon here. If it's clicked and it's solid, that means that it will keep your proportion. So it won't stretch or skew. It'll just make it bigger or smaller. And before I was changing the frame logo. And so I clicked it and you see it breaks. And that means that you can now change width and height uh, independently. I wanted to, I didn't realize that would stay unclicked. So I need to click that again and then make the changes I was going to make. Let's just say 247 by 65. Let's say scale. We'll go to this next one. We want this one to also be 247 by 65. And we're going to uncheck this and just do it right. 247 uh, by 65. There we go. And I don't know if that... I'd have to pull up the original logo again to see if it's exact. Um, but I think that's pretty close. If it's off, it's not off by much. Because the other one, the top logo, the one that's up here... This we didn't skew accidentally, uh, the mistake we made down here. So I'm going to make this one match the aspect ratio of this one. And hopefully that means that they are the same. So we're going to click scale to lock that in. And again, we're just going to kind of check our boxes uh, to see. I'm going to pick the midpoint of this E and compare it to the midpoint of the A. It's eh, The A is a little bit more slanted, so that's probably pretty close. Um... And then we'll do the same thing here, the midpoint of the E, and it's about the same. Okay, so I think we're good there. Um, next thing I wanted to tackle is we've got, let's do the wing, the front wing. The word frame was a little bit too big. We noticed that on the road course design, but there's a good chance we're going to have that problem on the Speedway one too. So... 
it would probably just be good to shrink the logos down a little bit and give ourselves a little bit of margin on the on the area so all right so we're going to bring it in to where the letters are inside of this line here and then we're going to get them inside this line on the outside as well so these these lines there's there's a little bit of a of a, of a curvature to the wing and that's what these lines are showing you is where that uh angle is in the wing okay the it's these angles here you see this this angle here and then this up angle here that's when you see those those clumps of lines that's what that is right there so by bringing the f inside those lines it's like starting the f right here and then the m would would end right here so that's how much we've shrunk it um now i'm not sure we need to shrink it quite that much i kind of want to go back now um and maybe uh undo that a little bit okay i think i think that'll be good to leave it for now now let's go to the speedway or the low down force version and let's make these a little smaller too because i think it's going to have the same problem here okay all right i think that'll look a lot better all right i just nudged these up and down a little bit because i think it'll make them centered a little bit um nothing big you didn't miss much um Okay, so we've got the nose taken care of, we've got the side pods taken care of, I got the engine cover taken care of, and I got the front wing over here taken care of. The next thing here we want to do is um, going to be a bit tedious, but I think it's going to look better. We thought we were kind of done with these fairings that go in front of the wheels, the, the rear wheels, um, but I don't like the way the Chevy logo shows up. I want the Chevy logo centered inside this black triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the safety clean logo someplace else and uh, so that it's not competing with the, the Chevy logo. And I'm probably just going to have the Chevy logo there. So we need to decide where exactly we want to put the safety clean logo. And I also want to add um, another performance plus logo. And I'm trying to decide if I want to put it on the back of the engine cover or if I want to have it listed here on the fairing. And I'm gonna grab uh, the Chevy logo and I'm gonna position this so that it's more, I'm gonna use the keys here because it's more precise. Um, kind of put it right in the middle. It almost looks like you're showcasing the Chevy logo by framing it with this triangle here. Um, that's definitely how I want that. Again, we'll come up here and we'll grab uh this safety clean we'll drop it here for now and then we'll grab the chevy logo and again we'll just center it just like that i think all right here, let's go ahead since these are don't need to be rotated and let's try and position this the way we think it would be and I'm just going to kind of try and center it a little bit. Let's put it like that and see how that looks. And let's grab this one over here. We'll kind of do the same thing. And then make sure it's not getting cropped. And we'll grab one it's always easier with the ones on the left driver's left of the car because of the way the the, the logo is angled it's not fighting the contour of the car uh, the way it is on the other side we're just going to slide these down a little bit that looks better okay so i'm gonna replicate that here I, I like this better than having it underneath, having it on this side pod area here, because this isn't going to be, from certain angles, this isn't going to be visible, because the, um, I can show you on the, on here, the the way this fairing blends in with the side pod, you're, you're down here in this little shadowed area. 
I don't want to put it over here because it crowds, um, it crowds the main side pod logo. Uh, some companies will put, or some teams will put companies here, um, but they're not usually the bigger sponsors. And you know, so if the cars, you know, if you're looking at the car like this, it's it's obscured. Um, I think up here has better visibility. Um, also, when you're using uh, certain on uh, on car camera angles, uh, it it you know, if you're looking back, there's an angle that looks back over this rear wheel and you get good visibility there. So if you're trying to give your sponsors the best visibility, I think this is a better spot. So the question now, though, um, is while we're looking at this, we'll place the safety clean logo up there like we did on the other configuration um, for the Speedway configuration as well. But where we want to put Performance Plus, um, we could do the same thing with them and add them here. We have them on the nose. But that's the only place we have them right now, and that's our oil sponsor. And we want to make sure that they're also that they're getting good visibility on the car. So I want to put them someplace else, and I kind of like the idea of having them somewhere on the engine cover. Uh, but I don't know exactly where I want to stick them because right now this Autolite logo is taking up quite a bit of the space. So it would kind of have to be here on the spine a little bit. Oh, also I want to add some Chevy logos up on the uh, the halo. I'll call it the halo portion of the arrow screen here, um, because that's something typically uh, that Chevrolet does. They put their badge up here on the top of the arrow screen. So we want to keep consistent with how they typically show uh, their branding on the cars. Down here, we need to go ahead and rotate these. So we go to our scale tool, turn it to a rotate tool, and then we're going to grab with the shift key held down. We're going to grab these safety clean logos and we're going to snap them to 180. And then we'll, oh, we're gonna say rotate. Did that save? It did. Um, now we're gonna grab this one. Um, and we're also gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say rotate. And now we gotta go ahead and reposition it. So we're gonna change over to the um, move tool. Make sure I get what it's called correct. And we don't really, the guidelines for this aren't quite as good. Uh, but we'll say right about uh, there or there. I think right about there looks centered. Okay. And then we will grab this one down here. And we'll do the same thing. We'll get that about centered. Actually, that's just about right there let's grab so up here i didn't use this the other times you always saw using this menu on um if you select this fourth tab it just has all of the files and and uh, layers that you've added recently um for this or any other project so if you want to carry something over from another project um everything is saved right here and this is really handy so that you don't have to keep going into the open as layer menu which is what i was doing before um and i just didn't realize that was there and i noticed that the other day i was like oh it's got all my common files here anything i've loaded previously is here so if i want to reload it like this performance plus logo i can just drag it over and there it is so you may have noticed me using that earlier uh, but i didn't point it out and uh, apologize for that but that is how that works let's see how that looks um not quite Uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to have it at an angle that's going to follow that spine. Um, now we're going to take that rotate tool and we're going to change it to the scale tool. And now we can start to fit it how we want it. So maybe like that. I don't want it encroaching too much on the Autolite logo. Maybe like that. Okay, and now I want to duplicate, which one is that? That's this one right here. So let's change this to what we called the other one. Performance plus engine cover. This is left. We're going to go by driver's left. And now we're going to do a duplicate. And again, we'll just do the fine control. We can also just match up the number if we want. 
Uh, but that looks pretty good. Actually, how close did we get? I'm just curious. This one was rotated. Oh, it's once you rotate it, it just resets it to zero, so we can't check it. I was curious how close I got it, just eyeballing it. Um, but let's select this one, and now let's get it about there, I think. That's where I think it... I think that looks about the same. So let's select the template, and then let's select this orange color, and we're going to select the, the paint bucket. And... And let's go ahead and make all of that... Whoop, I don't know if that's the right color. Hold on. Let me make sure I got the right color orange. I'm going to say OK, and now let's do that again. OK. I think these are the mirrors. I think this is the post that holds it up. And I think these are probably the posts themselves. Um, I think this is the top. So if you wanted to add a sponsor to the mirror, you could put it right there. So we got to grab our move tool. And we're going to move it up here. Obviously, we need to resize it significantly. So we're going to grab it with the resize tool. And it's going to be a pretty small logo. It's not going to be a big a big fella. Um, but we're just kind of going to put it right here next to where these like kind of louver vents are. Um, and we're going to stick it here. And this one's going to fight the contours a little bit. But I think it'll fit there. And now I'm going to copy this again and we're gonna make we're gonna make a bunch more copies of this we're not gonna resize it at all this one's gonna be fram fairing um, road course left and then again we're gonna grab it with the move tool and we are gonna drag it down here and we're gonna stick it right here where we had safety clean we're gonna fill that space with fram instead and that'll give them a little bit more uh, visibility on the side. And on the uh, Speedway version of the car, this will be the only place it shows up on the side. So uh, unfortunately, just the way we kind of planned everything, um, we just didn't make sure that Fram was visible on the side of the car. And again, you want to make sure they're visible from every angle. Um, so again, we're going to duplicate this. And um, this is going to be road fairing road course right all right and this we're just going to select and i'm just going to translate with this with the keys over to the other side actually let's take care of this uh this stuff first and we're going to drag you all the way down here so let's go ahead hold down shift whoop that doesn't <laughs> Okay, doesn't help when the window's over my thing. Okay, so now we're gonna hold down shift and we're gonna spin it to snap it. Hit rotate again. Uh, hit the move tool. Click on it to make sure I'm moving the right layer. I'm not, there we go. And uh, and again, just kind of center it in that area. That's good, I can't seem to get it perfect, but yeah, that's pretty good. Um, okay. And I'm going to save it again. I know we want to put Carbon X. I think I want to put Carbon X underneath the cockpit. Like right here. Maybe let's do that real quick. Let's see. Resize. Go to scale. Click on it. Make you super tiny because you're going to be a small boy. Uh, scale. We're going to zoom in. We're going to use the move tool. So we're going to stick you right about in here. Now we're going to go and use the rotate tool. We're going to hold down control for precision. Control. I think I want it like that. And that's a 3.36 angle. Well, that's different from what it was before. Um, okay, let's... I think that's going to be okay. Now we're going to rotate... I think that's about the same. Okay, I think that's gonna be right. I think I'm gonna like that. Okay. That's gonna be so pixelated. I don't know if I like that. 
I'm going to scrap this because I'm worried that that's going to get really pixelated. I mean, it is really pixelated and it's not going to look good. And I don't want to show their logo in a way that doesn't look good. It looks good on the side pod. Let's leave the, the mirrors the way they are and not worry about them right now. Uh, but what I do want to do is try and get those Chevy logos uh, to show up on the, the top of the, uh, the arrow screen. So when I look at the top of the arrow screen, there's kind of two pieces. You've got this piece that wraps around uh, the driver's head all the way. And then underneath it is actually, then this is where the, the screen is actually, I think, bolted in with some very, very uh, weird, it's like an offset Phillips screw. If you've ever seen that, that's actually how the windscreen's kept in. And those are here. So this is the piece that actually holds it in. Um, and I think that's where we want to put the Chevy logo. Okay, so let's try rotating it. I think it's still too big. So we're going to try and do it about like that, maybe. And the angle's probably good. Now we just got to rescale it. Um, let's see how that looks. I want to fix the rotation just a tad. Like that. Okay, I think I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and um, let's relabel this the Chevy um, arrow screen. We're gonna say left, and of course we're gonna then duplicate and call this right. Okay, and we're gonna take this. No, we're not gonna rotate it. We're going to use the move tool. I'm going to try and select it. And then we're going to slide this up so that we get the position correct. And then we're just going to modify the angle so that it lines up just how we want it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and export and you can now that we've uh export well actually hold on hold on no we can't do that yet we got to get all these extra layers off turn off all that stuff all right now we're going to do a save all right and now when you go to file you can just say export to autolay 85th ir18.tga because you've already done it once first time in every session you're going to have to do this the export as um but uh, you can get away with that for now. And we're going to go to, let's see, trading paints, right? And we're going to go through that process again. So we're going to say upload. And we're going to say select paint file. We're going to select Autolite 85th IR18 TGA. We're going to wait. All right. And we got select me. We do have to pick our car again. IR18, SIM stamp number, upload to my paints. This might be good to go. I'm kind of hoping. Um, let's go down here for our team paint. Kind of do the same thing again. Say upload, select a file, select the same file in the window. Wait for it to load. Get the success screen. All right, now we're going to go get out of that. We're going to go into iRacing. And all right, we got the new model loaded. I like Carbon X came in right where I wanted it, so I'm happy. I read the map correctly. We got Fram in a couple extra spots now on the back. That looks good. That looks good. Same on the other side. I'm happy with that. The Chevy logos on the roof are right where I wanted them. That looks really good. I'm happy with the Autolite logo on the nose that we resized. Uh, Performance Plus on the spine. Looks pretty good. I think um, it's not a great place for that logo. 
I may come back at some point in the future and, and adjust that because that may annoy me. But for right now, I think that works. Um, it's it's good visibility from a lot of different angles. Um, so I don't think that's what I'd l I wish I could move it down, but I don't know how this contour would affect it. We can cross that contour and maybe that's worth it. Um, or maybe it's better to, you know, have it someplace else. I don't know. Um, we did get these orange. So we did get the right, uh, objects. Those were the mirrors that we were playing around with, which I was pretty sure they were. It seemed to match up pretty well. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this. So there are some other things I'd like to play around with at some point, like some of the elements inside the cockpit. Um, some of those things I don't think you can change, but I think you can change um, the number plate. If I go out of iRacing and go back into GIMP and I turn the this stuff back on, you get these little bits and bobs like this. It's very difficult to tell what a lot of this stuff is. Um, but one of these is the, oh, I know what we didn't do. Oh, we didn't do our pit boards. Yeah, we got to do that still. Um, oh, and this stuff down here. Yeah, there's a couple things we didn't do. Hold on. We got a little bit more cleanup work to do. Um, we might have to run a little long, but somewhere there is a uh, little bits like how your name is displayed on the cockpit, uh, on the inside of the cockpit. I know you can change that. I've seen someone do it. Um, but I honestly don't know where... Uh, in here that shows up. I'm not sure what element uh, I would change to to make that uh, show up the way I want it to show up. So uh, that may be something I have to play around with a bit in the future. Um, you know, obviously things like this are probably the wheel. Um, I think. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think this is. Oh, some of it could be what's inside here, too. And some of this is just things that iRacing is going to overwrite because it's part of the basic vehicle model. Um, but I know you can change that little bit in the cockpit. So, um, so actually, the car mandatory, there's not that much stuff, which is really kind of surprising. Um, sorry to keep saying um all the time. <laughs> so let's look at some of the other... Let's get away from all the layers that we created. We could create a group. Car decal. Okay, so these are all the things here. If I see, I kind of cycle this on and off. This is the stuff that I think iRacing is going to overpaint because it's part of the basic vehicle model. Uh, but pit box colors, that we can change. We've got that down here. And right now we've got red and gray. So let's change the red to our orange and let's change the um the gray to black let's make it black and orange i think i like that that way when our pit box is sitting out in the sun it'll be super hot and burn people um okay so that's that pit pole base okay so this right here is actually the number that when you're coming into pit, you'll see that there's a big pole with a card on it that has your number and they will wave that up and down and they'll actually put it in front of where they want you to stop. And, and that'll have your number on it. And I think we want to make that something bright. So let's go ahead and make that our orange. There we go. And then our pit board base is the board that goes above the pit box that just kind of identifies that this is our pit and um we could do anything with that but let's go ahead and make uh, let's make that orange too let's go ahead and make that orange but i also want to put a sponsor on it they give you a little bit of space here to put a sponsor so this will be the last thing we do let's go ahead and drop a c squared racing logo in here and we will shrink this down quite a bit. And um, I want to change this red. I think we're going to change this red to black. Is that what we do on the rest of the car when we used our logo? We had the C. Oh, we had it all different, didn't we? Um, 
Okay, so let's change the white. We're going to go to colors, map, color exchange. We're going to change white to black. Um, ooh. Actually, wait a minute. Can I just invert? Let me right click and then say colors. Um, map. No, do I want to go to map? Linear invert, or just say invert. All right. And that makes, okay, and that makes uh, the color colors blue and black. And then we can take this blue and we can say um, colors, map, color exchange. And we will select that blue. And we're going to make that, oh, nope. What am I doing wrong? I'm going to select the blue and then we're going to say okay. And then the color we're going to change it to is just going to be white. There we go. And that's going to look like what we have the rest on the rest of the car. And we're going to go to rotate. And we're going to hold shift and snap this 90 degrees. And then we're going to resize it to scale so that it fits in that space. Um, let me look at the wireframe here. I want to make sure I'm not doing anything oh yeah okay that's gonna be that is not gonna be drawn so let we got to get it inside that green line glad I did that say scale now we're gonna move it again get it up there okay okay let's man do I maybe I do just want to have it by itself It's hard to center it because the logo is not actually centered in the decal. Um, I think maybe we'll just have that. Maybe we'll just have it like that. That'll look good. I think that'll look good. All right. So we are going to now do one last export. Let's do this real quick. I'm not going to talk about everything I do. I'm just going to blow through it real quick. Save, export, because we're running out of time. We're going to run over a little bit. But we're going to get this done. This is going to be complete. All right. We're going to go to back to trading paints. Upload. Select paint file. We're going to select our car. Open. Now, unfortunately, I can't check the pit board and stuff. Again, I have to log into a session to do that. So I won't see that until tomorrow. So we won't know if that looks good or not. So it's possible I could end up loading this model in tomorrow, find a couple things, and, and fix it again. But I think this is done. And uh, I think we're going to call this... We're going to call this done. Um, I will run it myself in iRacing. And that'll give me a chance to kind of see if there's anything up close that I don't like. Anything with the speedway version that I can't see when I render it that maybe I need to go back and fix just for the speedway version. Um, and I can take a look at some screenshots and things like that, but it, but I'm going to have to actually use the car in a session to kind of see all that stuff. So um, I won't be able to do that in this, in this session, but I think this is done. I'd be, it, there's a good chance that I'm not going to change anything. I, cause I really like how this looks and I really can't wait to show this off to to our sponsors. I can't wait to show it off to Fram and Autolite um, specifically because this really is their car. Um, I may come back later and do a Performance Plus safety clean car, like a black and yellow paint scheme that maybe would utilize the same template, but I would just do a color change. I think that could look really cool, actually. Um, but we'll see. I, we'll, we'll see if I come back later and, and, and do that. Um, as sort of an alternate uh, paint scheme to this because there are sort of our secondary sponsors, uh, Safety Clean and Performance Plus. So I kind of like to give them a feature. Right now we have a Carbon X one and Carbon X is, is um, actually one of our smaller sponsors. Great company, glad to support them, love to keep having them on the car, but I want to make sure that the sponsors that are giving us the most are also getting the most and getting the most exposure. So we've got a car that, that has Carbon X all over it, but we don't have a car that has Performance Plus and Safety Clean as the primary focus. And uh, they've been our longest continuous running sponsor. And so we may come back later on and do that. And if I do that, I might do that as a series as well. Um, maybe I'll, you know, we'll just pick this model and I'll just come in and, and modify it instead of starting from scratch. But I like that. I think, um, I really like how this came out 
And um, yeah, we're going to start running that this week. Um, this will be probably my primary car. Uh, so uh, just for anyone that's curious, it, it we're going to probably have a C squared racing car running in some events. Um, I won't be the driver, um, but they're, um, we're, we're thinking right now of, of giving someone else um, a C squared racing livery. So um, we're going to be out there, but uh, as far as uh, our sponsors at C squared racing, I will be the one driving these cars. Um, and uh, who knows? Uh, right now, I've been mostly focusing on helping Grand Premio with Sport Day practice, and this is a car that I drive primarily in practice, not really in races. But as I've been practicing with these guys and getting better and improving my skills and being able to run with faster and faster people, um, I'm getting a lot more confident about my sim racing skills. And I think that at some point I might actually start to want to enter some races myself. So stay tuned. If I do, um, maybe I'll, uh, I'll be able to stream some of that content as well. So, uh, but that is something to be cited for another day. This video is done. This car is done. This project is complete. Uh, thanks everyone for, uh, joining me for this. I hope that some of you get inspired to go off and create your, your own, uh, designs. We definitely took on a complicated design. The, the Indy car is one of the hardest ones to do because it's got the most little bits and bobs. Um, but you know, I think we came up with something really cool. I really, really like this. Um, if you guys decide to take on, uh, the challenge of doing your own cars in, in iRacing, uh, go ahead and, you know, I'd love to see, uh, hit me up on Twitter at Jason camps, uh, or find me, uh, on Instagram at Jason camps or hit our, our team page, which is uh, C2 underscore racing underscore team on Instagram. And, um, those should be uh, visible there at the, um, uh, bottom of your screen, uh, right below me. Let's see where. I, I'm all backwards here. <laughs> um, uh, go to one of those and share your pictures and we'd love to see. And if you have any questions and you're not sure how to do stuff, uh, we're not experts in GIMP. We don't know all of the ins and outs of everything, but, uh, but maybe we can help you out and maybe we can help you find the answers and learn something about it ourselves too. So um, by all means, um, oh, my, has my mic been that loud the whole time? Let me turn down my audio. I'm afraid that I've been screaming at you guys the whole time. Looks very blown out. Um, I'm going to just back away from the mic. Just get away from the mic. My voice is too powerful. Um, but yeah, no, share with us, um, you know, the projects you guys, you guys are doing. I'd love to see it. And uh, like I said, once we're, once we're good with this design and we verify that it, that it looks good um, in actual race conditions, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll put it up on Chain Paints. We'll put something on Instagram and Twitter uh, to let everyone know that it is available uh, so that you can go on the Jason Camps Trading Paints uh, group page and uh, and go ahead and download that along with the other cars. I've done stuff for the C8R uh, GTE uh, sports car. Um, I've got the Spec Racer Ford uh, Auto Light tribute car that we did earlier. I've got uh, some MX-5 Cup cars that we did for... Uh, both Carbon X and for Safety Clean that, that look really, really cool. I'm very, very happy with those. Um, what else did we do? I think there might be some other stuff up there as well, including my uh, Carbon X uh, Indy car is available as well. And this one will be up there, and we'll let you guys know when that's available. Uh, but that's uh, I'm going to call it a night now. Um, I'm going to end this stream. And thanks, everyone, for showing uh, or for uh, watching. And if you are watching this on YouTube, um, please do me a favor and uh, if you like the video, go ahead and, and hit the like button. And if you would like this content and want to see more of it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have a lot of different stuff. We have stuff like this. And then on our regular videos, we do stuff about racing history. We do stuff about um, uh, what's going on with our team. We do stuff about um, helping people out with sponsorship stuff and business relationships and like that. It's all kinds of stuff uh, that we like to do. And just, just anything that we think is interesting that, that's racing content. I'm going to have some stuff coming up pretty soon about the Indy 500 um, and some stuff, uh, some more Indy car related stuff that's going to be really interesting that I guarantee you're not going to see on anyone else's channel um, because I've got some some unique access and I've had uh, working at IMS and working with IndyCar. Um, I've been able to 
learn some things and, and get access to some access to some things that I don't think you're going to see on any of the other channels. And uh, so if you like IndyCar specifically, stay tuned because we're going to have some cool IndyCar content coming up over the next few weeks. Um, and actually, I don't know exactly when this video will go up on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it may already be on the channel. So go ahead and check our channel out. Uh, and those videos may already uh, be up and posted. So uh, thanks again, everyone, for showing. I know this is a long intro, but I appreciate it. I know we ran over, um, but, uh, but I'm glad we got this project done. Thanks for sticking with it. Um, I hope everybody has a, a good rest of their day or evening, depending on if you're watching this live or not. And uh, I will catch you guys on the next stream. And I'll see you later. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.